Okay, welcome again to our Tuesday night shiur, <laughs> Parashat Vayetze. So last week we spoke about Mincha. This week we're going to speak about Arvit. And we're going to see, because we really have a few questions about Yaakov Avinu. We know that the parasha says, Vayetze Yaakov mi Be'er Sheva, Ve'elech Harana, Ve'evga Bamakom, Ve'elen Sham. And he says that if you, he hit the place and he was there, it's a very interesting idea, Vayivgaba Mayakom. It doesn't say that Yaakov Avinu prayed, it says Vayivgaba Makom. He hit that place. It's like, he, you know, what does it mean Vayivga? It doesn't say that he went, like, he went and prayed. And we learn from there that Yaakov Avinu prayed Arvit. We also know that the Torah says that Yaakov Avinu was a tzaddik, he was a righteous man, because he left Be'er Sheva, and Rashi tells us that. When a tzaddik li- leaves the city, the city like lacks light. But what we need to understand is in the Parshat Vayetze, we see something very interesting. The difference between Yaakov and Yitzchak is that Yitzchak Zivug came to him. Yaakov had to go to his Zivug. Yaakov had to go and find his wife. Yitzchak's wife came to him. So I want to understand today the difference between why Yaakov had to go and find his wife. And why Yitzchak's wife came to him. And why Yaakov that we know that... Last week we said that there's a midah of Yitzchak that's mishubach ba'avot. He's praiseworthy amongst the other avot. But by Yaakov we know, everybody knows that Yaakov Avinu is bechir she ba'avot. Because Yaakov Avinu, all, he had the 12 tribes. He didn't have any psolet. That's what the Midrash says. Vaykach me'avne ha'makom. He took from the stones of the place. What, there were three stones, and he says that if the three, he put the three stones together, and if the, he said if these three stones come together, right, one of the thing is that if the three, if the stones came together, he would know that he would be, that a Kadosh Baruch Hu, the Midrash says three different things. One, that he knows that twelve tribes need to come, since they didn't come out of Avraham, and they didn't come out of Yitzchak, they'll come out of him. The second thing the Midrash says is that Keshem she yached Hakadosh Baruch Hu et Shmo al Avraham Ken yached et Shmo al Yitzchak. So too Hakadosh Baruch Hu is going to make his name flow upon me. And the third thing that Yaakov Avinu says that if the three, if the three Avanim become one, if they all become one, says Yaakov Avinu, I know she lo itzep solet miadi. That I'm the one that's going to be straight. Everything is going to come good for me. Nothing will be bad. And we know that Yaakov Avinu got married at the age of 84. Wow. So we have to pay Dalit Shanim. And we know that pay Dalit is connected. A person, Chaz Shalom has one ca- kind of Ill- illicit relations. You have to fast 84 fast. So Yaakov Avinu was metaken Chet Adam Rishon, the 130 years that Adam Rishon left his wife, and there were all kinds of things happening in those 130 years that Adam Rishon left his wife. And we really, the truth is that we know that Shufra the Yaakov is Shufra the Adam Rishon. It's the beauty of Yaakov Avinu was really the beauty of Adam Rishon, and Yaakov Avinu was really a Gilgul of Adam Rishon. He came to fix the Chet of Adam Rishon, and we know that really all of us, all our souls were incorporated in Adam Rishon. And therefore a person has to know that wherever you enjoyed the sin of the Etzada Tovera, when Adam Rishon ate from the Etzada, no matter what the fruit tree was, whether it was a grape, whether it was a grain, no matter what the Gemara says, wherever you were in the building called Adam Rishon, that is what your rectification has to be. But where was Yaakov Avinu? Yaakov Avinu was also existed in Adam Rishon. But where was Yaakov Avinu in Adam Rishon? He was in the Kane. In the Kane of the Adam Rishon. He was in the windpipe. And what does the Torah tell us and when we come to Chot Pesach? The Torah tells us, why do we lean to the left? Because Shema Yagdim et HaKane Veshet. Maybe a person will bring his windpipe to his esophagus. And then a person, God forbid, chokes. Therefore, a person has to lean to the left and he can't lean to the right. So when you're in the windpipe, you don't get any enjoyment 
from what's coming down the throat. So really Yaakov Avinu when Adam were in the Neshama of Yaakov Avinu existed in that building called Adam Arishon, Yaakov Avinu's Neshama didn't get any enjoyment from the sin of the Chet of Adam Arishon. That's why it could have only been Yaakov Avinu that could come and fix Adam Arishon. And that's why when Adam Arishon left his wife for 130 years and all kinds of things happened, it took Yaakov Avinu had to wait 84 years until he married and he came into, came into Mary Leah and then he married Le- Rachel. But we have to understand if Yaakov Avinu was so great, why was the tefillah, first of all, it doesn't even say that Yaakov Avinu prayed. It says, Vayivgaba makom. And he hit that place. We learn from there, Chazal, come the rabbis, come and teach us that, oh, Yaakov Avinu tikent tefillah tarvit. How? It says, he, not only that, he missed the tefillah. Really, he wanted to pray during the day. But when he says, Shema avati al makom shavotait palalu veloit palalti, maybe I went over the place that my forefathers prayed and I didn't pray, which was Beit Hamikdash. Kafzalo aharetz, the land, the land sort of crippled together, and Yaakov Avinu went backwards, and Hakadosh Baruch Hu held the day, and he prayed arvit. Now says the Gemara in Brachot something very interesting. There's a machloket in the Gemara in Arvot. In Brachot says, Tanu Rabbanan Maaseh Betamid Echad. One student came into the Beit Hamidrash. Sheba Lifnei Rabbi Yoshua, and he came in front of Rabbi Yoshua, and he told him, "Listen, Rabbi Yoshua, I have a question. Tfilat Arvit Chovah Rishut. The prayer of Arvit, when we pray Arvit, is that considered obligatory? Meaning, Shacharit and Mincha, every Jew has to pray. Why? Because Shacharit is Keneged Korban Shel Shachar, the first Korban that was brought in the Beit Hamidrash, <coughs> and." Tfilat Mincha is Keneged Korban Shel Ben Arbaim, the, the Korban that ended everything. But we know that Tfilat Arvit, there's no sacrifice that was brought in the Beit HaMikdash at night. So comes this student and asks Rabbi Yeshua, he says, Rabbi, I want to understand something. This prayer of Arvit, is it Chovar Rishut? Amar Le Rishut. Really, it's not, you know, it's not obligatory. I pray, you want to pray Arvit, pray Arvit. You don't want to pray Arvit, don't pray Arvit. So for, right away... A person has to ask himself, Yaakov Avinu, which is, The image of Yaakov Avinu is on the Kisei Kavod. Until HaKadosh Baruch Hu Karalo El. HaKadosh Baruch Hu called Yaakov Avinu a God, Kiviachol. Which means Yaakov Avinu raised himself to a level where the 12 tribes came out of him. Yaakov Avinu didn't see any psolet. He's the Bechir Shabavot. He's the highest avot that there is. Yaakov Avinu is the highest of the high. The only reason Avraham Avinu, we said this many times, why did HaKadosh Baruch Hu save Avraham Avinu Mikivshan Ha'esh? Why did he save him from the burning from the burning fire of Nimrod? Only because he saw that later on Avraham Avinu was going to have the son called Yaakov. So if Avraham Avinu got a tefillah, which is called Shacharit, and Yitzchak Avinu got a tefillah, which is called Mincha, and those are obligatory tefillot, a person cannot, if you, are, if you don't pray tefillat shacharit, and if you don't pray tefillat mincha, it's a problem. How can, the, how can this student walk into the shul, and say, Rabbi, I have a question, tefillat arvit chovah reshut, comes there, be a shul, and tells them it's reshut. It's not obligatory. You want to pray, pray. You don't want to pray, don't pray. Yaakov Avinu, if, he's gonna, if any tefillah that he's going to make, shouldn't that be obligatory? So the Gemara continues, Balifnei Rabban Gamliel, he came in front of Rabban Gamliel, Rabban Gamliel was the Nasiador, he was the head of the generation, he was the biggest rabbi at that time, and he comes to the rabbi and says, Rabbi, Tfilat Arvit Reshut Chovah, does a person have to pray Arvit or he doesn't have to pray Arvit? Amal lo Chovah? What do you mean Reshut? It's not, of course you have to pray Arvit. Of course, we know that really Tfilat Arvit in the beginning was not part of the equation until we all accepted upon ourselves to make sure that Tfilat Arvit is obligatory. So Rabban Gamliel Amar Lo Chovat, Amar Lo Valo Rabbi Yoshua Amar Reshut, says, Din Rabbi Yoshua says Reshut, so the Gemara goes on and continues, there's a big machloket, and Rabban Gamliel invited Rabbi Yoshua to the Beit Midrash, and he asked him, did you say that Tfilat Arvit is Reshut, or did you say it's Chovat? And the guy said, oh, I was here. I testified that he said it was Rashut. You pray. If you want to pray, you pray. If you don't want to pray, you don't want to pray. Until Rabban Gamliel made Rabbi Yeshua stand and say it. So why are these rabbis arguing whether Tfilat Arvit is, a, is something obligatory or is something that you want that, that is, is part of the equation or it's the Rashut. You want to pray, pray. You don't want to pray, pray. Don't pray. Later on, Amar Rabbi Yochanan 
Ezu ben olam haba. Who is a person that's considered to be a ben olam haba? It doesn't mean you merit olam haba. You become a ben olam haba. Meaning a person is part and parcel with olam haba. Ze az somech gula letfila. When we say Hashem, when we say Baruch Ata Hashem Gaal Israel, and then you say Hashem Svatai Tiftach Ufi Agiti Latecha, that's called being Somech Geulah Latfila, meaning that I mention the fact that Am Israel left Egypt, and right away I get up for prayer, which is what we do in Shacharit, and which is what we do in Arvit. It comes to Rabbi Yochan, and it says that a person is considered to be Olam Abba when he connects the. Redemption out of Egypt, and he says, "Hashem fatay tefrach." In which tefila? Arvit, not in Shacharit. Ezu ben olam haba comes. Rabbi Yochanan says, "Kol asomech geula letefila." When you say Baruch Ata Hashem Gaal Israel, and then you say Hashem Svatay Tiftach Ashkivenu, the bracha of Ashkivenu is really called Geula Richta. It's called the continuation of that redemption. It's not a stoppage. So, what does that mean? If tefila arvit is reshut. Meaning you want to pray, pray. You don't want to pray, don't pray. How can you base if somebody's a ben olam haba? He's the son of olam haba. Meaning it's it's his home. If you're somech gula letfila. So we have a few questions to just whet the appetite. Yaakov Avinu bechir shebavot is the greatest of the fathers. Everybody got a tefila. All of a sudden Yaakov Avinu's tefila is in limbo. You you want to pray, pray. You don't want to pray, don't pray. Really, it's a reshut. It's not a chova. Obligatory. You want to you want to do it. You want, don't want to do it. How can you say that this is the whole world really was created for Yaakov Avinu? We couldn't know Yaakov Avinu. Ishtam Yoshevo Alim. He's the person that came and was metaken chet adam arishon. From Yaakov Avinu come out the twelve tribes. How can it be that the tefillah of Yaakov Avinu is even in a thought process of being that you want to pray, pray, you don't want to pray, don't pray it. That's our first question. And we know according to Rabbi Yochanan, it says that a person is, that that's the only tefillah that if you're zairba, if you're careful in it, to be somech gula tefillah, you get olam haba. He doesn't say it about shacharit, he doesn't say it about mincha. Last week we said that mincha is a great tefillah, that a person should be careful by tefillah mincha, because lo nena Eliyahu ala b'mincha, Eliyahu Navi was only answered when he prayed tefillah mincha, but it doesn't say that if a person prayed tefillah mincha, he's a ben olam haba. You become a son of the world to come, which means you become part and parcel of the world to come, it's inherited it to you. HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives it to you like a father who has wealth and gives it to his son. By Batfilat Tarvit, it says, Rabbi Yochanan says, Kol HaSomech Gula Letfilah becomes a person that's Ben Olam Abba. You don't see that by any other Tfilot. But on the other hand, there's a Machloket in the Gemara whether you even have to pray Tfilat Tarvit. So it's two extremes. The Torah is taking us in two different venues. Either you have to pray this prayer or you don't have to pray. You do you feel what you do. But on the other hand, if you do pray it, you become a Ben Olam Abba, which means that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is your father. You're his son, and he has to inherit to you his wealth, which is Olam Abba. <coughs> now we also have to understand a different thing. <coughs> Yaakov Avinu, when he goes down, when he goes down to find his wife, right? When he leaves Haran, he leaves with a lot of wealth, right? Why? Because he knows, listen, when Eliezer left Yitzchak, when Eliezer went to find the wife for Yitzchak, Avram Avinu gave him all his wealth, and Eliezer went... With the wealth of Avram Avinu, he went with gold, he went with silver, he went with camels, he went like a big shot. He goes, listen, I'm going to represent Avram Avinu, I'm going to find the wife for Yitzchak, I have to show her what he owns. So when Yaakov Avinu leaves his parents and he goes to find the wife, what happens then? Eliphaz, the son of Esav, right? Says to him, listen Yaakov, I have a big problem. My father told me to kill you, but I grew up by the hands of Yitzchak. And my grandfather told me that I can't kill my uncle. I grew up in Dusha. But listen, what am I going to do? I have to do the will of my father. So Yaakov Avinu tells him, what? Take my wealth. Ani chashuv kemet. A person who has nothing is considered to be like dead. You'll do the will of your father and we'll continue. <laughs> Nonetheless, we see something very interesting by Yaakov. It says Yaakov Avinu goes down. I look up to my eyes and I say to Kadosh Baruch Hu, where is my where is my wife going to come from Isri is my wife my help means my wife 
אל ההורים לפני ולמעבדני בשעה שאליפז נתן ממנו כל ממונו. The Midrash says at the time that אליפז took all the money from יעקב אבינו, אמר מאין יבוא עזרי. הקדוש ברוך הוא לוק. When Eliezer went to find a wife for Yitzchak, he had wealth. I'm coming down, I'm going to find a wife for myself, I'm coming empty-handed. How am I going to get a wife? What am I going to give her? I have nothing. So he says, איך אפשר שמאין בלא ממון יבוא עזרי? How can I get a wife? I have no money. How many of us have that? Every person says, oh, I can't get married. I don't have financial stability. I don't have this. So Yaakov Avinu is going to deal with your question today. Because I hear this all the time. A person, I say to a person, how come you, know, you don't get married? Oh, I don't have financial stability. I don't have the right job. I'm waiting for the right job. So here, Yaakov Avinu dealt with that problem also. He says, Chas v'shalom. So Yaakov Avinu gave him. He had this question also. Yaakov Avinu was like us. He had to go, oh look, I don't have financial stability. I don't have three million dollars in the bank. I can't get married. I, I went. My, my, father, my father, when he sent them, my grandfather, when he sent to find a wife for Yitzchak, he sent all his wealth. Me? No, no financial stability. What does Yaakov say? Chas v'shalom. I'm taking my trust from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Ezri mi'im Hashem. You know who's going to give me my wife? HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Ose shamayim va'aret. You think that if HaKadosh Baruch Hu can make the heavens and the earth, he can't give me a wife? Yaakov Avinu also goes, I'm empty-handed, I can't find a wife, I don't have financial stability. What am I going to do? I'm not going to find a wife. says, oh, chas v'shalom, says Yaakov Avinu. I'm putting my faith in money? But then on the other hand, we have another problem. Yaakov Avinu seems to have an obsession with money. Why? When Yaakov Avinu comes back after years with Lavan, by the way, it says, Lavan garti, right? V'taryag mitzvot shamarti, Very interesting that Yaakov Avinu has to go down into the darkness all the time. Imagine the life of Yaakov Avinu. If you had, if you had a company and you had a CEO of that company, yeah? Wouldn't you worry about the CEO? Wouldn't you make sure that this CEO had everything? He had an assi- a private assistant, an assistant to the private assistant. This is Yaakov Avinu. You're talking about a CEO of a company that can make your company, not a billion dollar company, you can make your bu- company a trillion dollar company. This is Yaakov Avinu we're talking about. This is the CEO of a Kadosh Baruch Hu. He's running the show. He's running the world. You're sending him down to the lion's den of Lavan. You're making him wear, work winters, summers, Yaakov Avinu says, I didn't see day, I didn't see night. What are you doing? What's going on with Yaakov Avinu? This is your VIP son? You're sending him down to the lion's den of Lavan. He's cheating him left and right. He worked seven years for one wife. You gave him another wife. What's going on in the life of Yaakov Avinu? Not only that, when Yaakov Avinu leaves Lavan, All of a sudden, Yaakov Levado, he's left by himself. What did he go back over the river for? He went back over the river for a small little vessel. Yaakov Avinu, you're risking your whole family for a little vessel. That's how obsessed you are with money. Does that make sense to anybody? He's worried about money when it comes to Shiduch. He's worried about money when he leaves his vessel over the, the river. So he has to go back to the river. To the Yaakov Avinu. He's, he's constantly, Yaakov Avinu lives a life of doubt and strength. Doubt and strength. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, don't worry about a sav. I'm worried. Vayal. He's scared. What are you scared about? Shema Yigro Machet. Maybe the sin's going to do it. So you see, Yaakov Avinu is in, in a sense of limbo, but he strengthens himself. Ma'ayin yavo ezri, I don't have any money. Chas v'shalom. Ezri mi'im Hashem, osei shomayim v'arat. He strengthens himself. No, how can I have this thought? So what's this idea of tefillat arvit? What's the Torah trying to teach us about Yaakov Avinu? By the way, who was another Gilgul of Yaakov Avinu? Mordechai. Vayishev Mordechai b'Shar HaMelech. Mordechai was also a Gilgul of Yaakov Avinu. Now why is that connected? Because really Yaakov Avinu, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, is sending us a message. What's Tfilat Arvit? Tfilat Arvit is in a state of darkness. Where do you see, by Yitzchak Avinu, he wasn't allowed to leave Eretz Yisrael. By Yaakov Avinu, when Yaakov Avinu has to go down to Mitzrayim, he has to go down to Egypt. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, V'anochi ered imach, I'll go down with you. Why is it that when the Torah introduces us 
that the idea of Tfilat Arvit is talking about a Shiduch. By Mincha it also, it says, Vayishtzei Tzchak Lasuach Basadeh. Yitzchak went out to the field, and it also, who, when he, after he finished Filat Mincha, he lifted up his eyes and he saw Rivka. Says the Midrash Rabbah, Yesh, Olech Lezivugo, Veyez Zivugo Ba'elav. There's a person that goes to his wife, and there's a person that his wife comes to him. By Tfilat Mincha, his wife came to him. By Tfilat Arvid, he had to go to his wife. What's the, the message that the Torah is trying to tell us? So there's two different things here. There's a relationship between Akadosh Baruch Hu and Knesset Israel. Knesset Israel means us. There's a relationship of a male and a female. A male is always <laughs> called the Meshpia, it's called the giver. A female is called the taker, she's the receiver. So when a male and a female, that's why a woman constantly wants to get married. Why? Because she needs to, she needs to receive. A male is called the Meshpia. So that's why we have tefillah. When we, a person gets up for tefillah, when you get up the first time, you're the male. Tfilat Chazara, you become the female. Why? Because in the, in the first time, you're the giver. When the Tfilat, when the tfilah comes back, that's why it's called Chazara. It's a re, it's, it's, what does it mean? You're re- receiving. That, you become the female. Yesh olech lezivugo, zivugo by love. By Yaakov Avinu, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is teaching us a lesson of Galut. A lesson of exile. Says the Kadosh Baruch Hu, when it comes to exile, Vanochi Eredi Mach. You know what the will of a Kadosh Baruch Hu is in exile? That we bring a Kadosh Baruch Hu down here. A Kadosh Baruch Hu is here. But Yaakov Avinu Tfilat Arvit is in the state of darkness. You see, Yaakov Avinu's life is that he's going down. Yaakov Avinu had no tikkun. He wasn't even part of Chet Adam Rishon. He had nothing to fix, but yet he's the one that fixes the Chet Adam Rishon. Why is his Tfilat Tfilat Arvit? Because, and why is he so worried about, why is Yaakov Avinu so worried about material possessions? Because the Torah tells us that when a person has the material possessions, there are sparks of holiness that are ingrained in those material possessions that belong to him. You know, all of a sudden a person goes in the world, you have something and you lost it, right? Why did you lose it at that point? Because it no longer belongs to you. You took out all the sparks of holiness that were for you, now somebody else has to do it. So that guy that found your lost article, he has now to take the sparks of Kedusha. Now when a person has an item and that item breaks, why did it break at that moment? Because you took out everything from it. Whatever belonged to you, those sparks of Kedusha, those sparks of holiness that belonged to your Neshama, you took out of it. That's why it broke at that moment. Any relationship is the same thing. All of a sudden you were friends with a guy for 10 years and somehow that guy disappears, you don't see him again? That connection was severed. You took out whatever was supposed to be in that connection, it's no longer. So when Chazal tells us that Yaakov Avinu prayed tefillat arvit, what does that mean? Yaakov Avinu has to go down into the darkness. And only Yaakov Avinu can do that. Yaakov Avinu is teaching us the lesson of exile. The lesson of exile, you know what Milchemet Gog Vimagog is? The Zohar says, what's Milchemet Gog Vimagog? It's not what you think, it's not going to be a nuclear war. You know what the Milchemet Gog Vimagog is? It's a war of thoughts. Exactly. Milchemet Gog Vimagog is a nuclear war inside a person's head. The Yetzirah is getting it, it's, a, it's, it's an impression. It's a thought of perception. It's a, war, it's a war of thoughts. That's why you see the world is constantly trying to get through into your eyes. Billboards, commercials, movies, radios, iPhones. A person's glued to his phones. It's constantly giving you messages. The Yetzirah is constantly giving you messages that your mind is constantly in doubt. A person's in doubt. That's the last exile. The lax exile is that a person, Mechemet Gog Magog, is a nuclear war inside your head. That you don't know who you are. You don't know what's going to be. You're always in doubt. Even Yaakov Avinu was left like a poor man. Imagine. The CEO of the company. Yaakov Avinu Bechir Avot. He's left like a poor man. He says, Me'ayin Yavo Ezri. Oh, one second. No, no, I can't let that thought in. Ezri Mi'im Hashem. Akadochaz V'Shalom says. How can I even think about that? Akadosh Baruch Hu can't give me, can't give me a wife. Why does he go back for that little kettle?
because it says tzadikim mamonam chaviv alem kegufam. By the tzadikim, their wealth is just as precious to them as their own body. What does that mean? Because the sparks of holiness that exist in what a person when a person goes out to work. What does that mean when you go out to work? The Sfat Emet says, you know, how do you live Torah even in your workplace? That when you go out to the material world, you have to pray to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and tell him HaKadosh Baruch Hu, I want to cling on to you in this materialism. When I go out to work, I want to do whatever it is that I'm doing by sitting and learning. Those sparks of holiness that I have to gather from the world that are connected to only my neshama, my soul, they're only connected to my soul. I want to make sure you... So therefore you live, you're doing the will of Hashem, you're getting life, you're getting the source of life even when you're out working. That's what Yaakov Avinu says. Yaakov Avinu, when he takes out Rachel and Leah, he tells them, look, I worked for your father. Why do you think Yaakov Avinu has to endure winters like summer, summer like winters, days like nights, nights like days? He's teaching us the lesson of Galut, that in Galut, you're going to be in places that you don't want to be in. <laughs> Akadosh Baruch Hu throws Yaakov Avinu into the lion's den because there's all, there's sparks of Kedusha that Yaakov Avinu has to take out of Lavan. Who was Lavan later on? Bilam Lavan later on became Bilam and look how Bilam's jealousy was of the of the Jewish people it says levad look at this nation how beautiful they are in their tents so Yaakov Avinu is in Tfilat Arvit why is Tfilat Arvit why is it the question whether it's Rishut or Chova because you're not allowed to go down into the darkness unless Hashem puts you there a person is not allowed to go down to the darkness. You're not allowed to fall. But if they make you fall, then you have to fall. That's the secret of this exile. That a person says, Kadosh Baruch Hu, I don't understand what's going on with me. I'm doing everything right. Why am I constantly falling? If you're falling because you made yourself fall, it's a problem. But if HaKadosh Baruch Hu makes you fall, it's because He needs you to do it. That's why Kol HaSomech Geula Letfila Be'arvit. If a person connects redemption of Yetziat Mitzrayim, the redemption of Egypt, to Tfila Tarvit, Uniya Ben Olam Aba. Because a son is willing to do whatever he needs to do for his father, even go down to the mud. And when you go down to the mud, it doesn't always feel so good. It's not like when, you're, when you feel elated. It's not like when a person feels so spiritually close to Kadosh Baruch Hu, when your learning is going good. When you get up and pray and you feel, wow, what a prayer. When you do a mitzvah and you get all excited, no, sometimes Kadosh Baruch Hu sends you into the mud. But when you're a son, you're willing to go into the mud. But it's a very fine line. That's why it is, is Tfilat Arvit Reshut? Or is Tfilat Arvit Chova? What does that mean? Because it's not up to you. Whether you go down to the darkness you see in today's world, the person is one day, once Rabbi Nachman was at a wedding, and there was a jokester at the wedding, and the jokester acted one second like a priest, and the next second like a rabbi, and everybody started to laugh. So Rabbi Nachman said to the crowd, that you're all laughing, but really that's what happens to a Jew every day. One second you want to, you, you're a priest, which means you're going the opposite direction, one second you're a rabbi. That's what happens to a Jew in this Galut. It's extremes. And you don't know what's going on with you. But that's the idea. If you're going into the mud because you chose to, that's not allowed. But that's the idea. Is tefillat arvit chova or is tefillat arvit reshut? What does it mean Yaakov Avinu became Mordechai? You see by Yaakov Avinu he becomes Mordechai. He's always related to some kind of redemption. Yaakov Avinu is the, is, is the third of the Avot, the last Galut. Mordechai saved Am Yisrael. Why? Who became when Mordechai didn't bow down to Aman? Why didn't he bow down to Aman? Because Yaakov bowed down to Esav, and even though Yaakov was bowing down to Joshchina, the Arizal says that Esav came back as Aman. And Yaakov came back as Mordechai. And that's why it says, V'lo Mordechai wouldn't bow down to Aman because he knew that he had to fix the fact that he bowed down the first time to Esav. So 
So Yaakov is really, what is Yaakov? He's the white knight in the darkness. That's why Kadosh Baruch Hu sends him down to the house of Lavan. You see by Avram Avinu, Kadosh Baruch Hu takes him away from Terach. Yitzchak, a whole different situation. Yitzchak Avinu is a person that doesn't go anywhere. Everybody comes to him. His wife comes to him. Eli Melech comes to him. He doesn't leave Eretz Yisrael. He's a whole different entity. He's a person that lives in Olam Abba. Yaakov Avinu is a person that lives in this world and in the world to come. That's why it says Yaakov, Yaakov. That's why Yaakov Avinu, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, Veloi kereshim chaod Yaakov ala Yisrael. You, why? Because what's happening to you is what's going to happen to Am Yisrael in the last exile. Because if you lived, imagine living a life of Yaakov. You, lived, you leave the house of your father. The first second you leave the house of your father, your, your nephew robs you. You get to the house of Lavan, you say, I'm willing to work for you, he cheats you. You work for 14 years, you don't know day, the guy che- cheats you, he does, he goes, Kadosh Baruch, where are you? This guy's cheating me left, right, and center. I was supposed to marry the younger daughter, I married the older daughter, what's going on with my life? It, I, Kadosh Baruch, are you with me or you're against me? You have nothing, you're Yaakov Avinu. You're the CEO of the company. That's Galut. You don't see a Kadosh Baruch. Hu. It's nighttime. Yaakov Avinu lived the world of night. Look at how many Yisurim Yaakov Avinu from one Yisurim to, from one problem to another problem. You get you get robbed. You go to Lavan. After you leave Lavan, Dina. You leave the, you, you 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 get you get rid of Dina. Yosef. It doesn't end by Yaakov Avinu. The problems don't end. That's Tfilat Arvit. Why is Yaakov Avinu metakena Tfilat that we're in? We're in doubt whether this tefillah is reshut or chova, whether it's obligatory or it's something that you could do if you want to, because Yaakov Avinu displayed to us going down to the darkness. Kol asomech tefillat arvit, geula letefillat arvit, is ben olam haba. So, we, met, we mentioned that tefillah is an idea of female and male relationship. So the tefillat arvit, sometimes we act as the male, and sometimes we act as the female. And sometimes keviachol HaKadosh Baruch Hu acts as a receiver, and sometimes he acts as a giver. We know that Yaakov Avinu prayed at night, and Yitzchak Avinu prayed during the day. So he says something very interesting, he says like this. Why does Yitzchak Avinu, his zivug comes to him, and by Yaakov Avinu he goes to his zivug? Because Yaakov Avinu acted as the giver, and Yitzchak Avinu acted as the receiver. And we know that the Laila, night, who's in control, the sun or the moon? The moon. Mm. So what happens in the moon? The moon at night, how does it get its light? The moon sun. gives us light, but it becomes a receiver of the light from the sun. Which is a symbol of man. Right? So he says that the night, so really the the idea of tefillat of Ravit is inyan yechuda dukra v'anukva. It's connecting Knesset Israel and HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Knesset Israel is us, and a kadosh baruch Hu. and there's always a relationship of a female and a male. So what happens at night? <coughs> what happens in the time of night? We become, we bring a kadosh baruch Hu to this world, because at night a person can't see. So Yaakov Avinu was that knight in shining armor in the nighttime. He was constantly revealing a Kadosh Baruch Hu in a place that you couldn't see. That's why he was obsessive about his money. Because he needed to make sure that he wouldn't leave even one spark of holiness in the darkness. Because his whole reason was going down to the house of Lavan. That's why the first thing he says to Esav, Im Lavan garti v'taryag mitzvot shamati, You want to know my journey into the darkness? My journey into the darkness, make sure you understand this Esav, I didn't leave even one spark of holiness. I revealed the name of a Baruch Hu even in the dark 
darkest of places. That's why I made Tfilat Arvit. When a person gets up and he prays, he's revealing the name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu wherever he is. Says Yaakov Avinu, you know what I did? I revealed the, the name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the darkness of places. In the house of Lavan, where there's Avodah Zarah. You know Rachel, when she stole the Avodah Zarah of Lavan, why are you stealing the Avodah Zarah of Lavan? Well, who cares? Avodah Zarah has power? Yeah, at that time, Avodah Zarah did have power. The Trafim of Lavan, you know why Rachel stole the Trafim of Lavan? Because she knew that if she wouldn't steal them, you know what they would say? Yaakov Barach, Yaakov Barach, Yaakov is leaving, Yaakov is leaving. They had powers. The Avodah Zarah at that time had power. Rachel says, we're going to leave our father, we have to sell, we have to escape, we have to take the Avodah Zarah with us. That's why Chazal, at the time of the second Beit HaMikdash, the first Beit HaMikdash, they took away the power of the Avodah Zarah, the second Beit HaMikdash. They took away the power of the Avodah Zarah because it had powers. HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave Avodah Zarah powers. That's why she took him and she stole him from Levan. She didn't want Levan to know that they were running away from him. So Yaakov Avinu says, in Levan Garti, Tareg Mitzvot, Shamarti, Yisav, listen, I did my part. I revealed the Kadosh Baruch Hu even in the darkness of places. So that CEO of the company called Yaakov Avinu. When Yaakov Avinu is making tefillah tarvit, and all of a sudden Rabban Gamliel and Rabbi Yoshua, they're having an argument, is tefillah tarvit chova? Is it obligatory? Is it reshut? Is it something that we have to do? Is it something that we don't have to do? And Milchemet Gogu Magog, which is a representation of a person is in doubt. Why are you in doubt? When is the person ever in doubt? In the state of darkness. When a person is in a state of darkness, then you're in doubt. That's why it says that Eliyahu Navi comes with Shiv Levavot Al Banim. He's going to straighten your mind. What do you think Eliyahu Navi is going to come? Eliyahu Navi is going to come back to you and he's going to give you a straightness of mind. He's going to give you the right way of perceiving the world. But Yaakov Avinu already did the job for us. He made Tfilat Arvit. Tfilat Arvit is revealing a Kadosh Baruch Hu even in the darkness of places. Yaakov Avinu goes down and says, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, I have nothing. How am I going to get married? Chas v'shalom. Ezri mi'im Hashem. I can't rely on what I'm seeing. I can't rely on material wealth. I can't rely on my strengths. Ezri mi'im Hashem osei shamayim v'aretz. Says Yaakov Avinu, how can I be in doubt? How can I doubt that I'm going to get a wife because I have nothing? And if I had something, that would mean I could get a wife? That's Tfilat Arvit. Tfilat Arvit means that even in the darkness of places, a person knows how to reveal a Kadosh Baruch Hu. What does it mean to reveal a Kadosh Baruch Hu in the darkness of places? That you know that a Kadosh Baruch Hu is going to take care of you even when you have nothing. A Kadosh Baruch Hu is going to give you a wife, he's going to give you a job, he's going to give you whatever you need to be in the journey that you need that's called Olam Azeh, even when you have nothing. That's why Yaakov Avinu says, Achi Chazek, imagine what the Torah is telling us. The Midrash says, Achi Chazek. Yaakov Avinu also needed to strengthen himself. When does a person need to strengthen himself? At night time, when things are going, when you're in doubt. When you don't see a Kadosh Baruch Hu, that's when you need Chizuk. Yaakov Avinu gave us a, gave us a message. When you're going to be in Galut, and it's going to seem like your Kadosh Baruch Hu is not with you. It's going to seem like you're doing all the right things. And a Kadosh Baruch Hu left, and people are cheating you. And the Yetzirah is taking advantage of you. Achi Chazek. Chas v'shalom. Ma ani morid bitchoni ba'ashem. Listen to these words. Am I taking my bitachon away from HaKadosh Baruch Hu? Am I taking my trust? You're right. It's a little cloudy outside. Things aren't right. It doesn't seem right. Chas v'shalom. Ma ani morid bitchoni ma'ashem. Am I taking my trust from HaKadosh Baruch Hu? Ezri mi'im Hashem. Here he's talking about a wife. But he means my help. My guidance, my salvation, whatever salvation I need in that darkness that I am, that's from HaKadosh Baruch Hu Hosei Shemayim Varat. It doesn't matter if I deserve it, if I don't deserve it. That's why Tfilat Arvit Roshut or Chova. It's a big question. Is Tfilat Arvit Roshut, is it obligatory? We pass in the Halacha, the Halacha is, you're right, you have to daven Arvit. What does it mean you have to daven Arvit? Comes Rabban Gamliel says, you know why you have to daven Arvit? Because you have to realize that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is even with you in the darkness of places. That's why we accept it upon ourselves, Tfilat Arvit, as obligatory. Because if a Jew goes in a dark place and he doesn't think that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is with him, that's a disaster. So Tfilat Arvit Chova. Even though Yaakov Avinu 
the reshut part of it is that if they throw you in the mud, you have to be there, but don't put yourself there. But when it comes to the realization, if a Kadosh Baruch Hu is with me in the state of darkness, that's chovah, that's obligatory. Am I going to take my bitachon away from Hashem? That's the lesson of Yaakov Avinu. That's the lesson of Tefillat Arvit. That even in the darkness of places, you have to reveal a Kadosh Baruch Hu. And you have to trust that a Kadosh Baruch Hu is going to give you whatever salvation you need in that place.